yesterday we covered all the five limbs of striving so that they are necessary for the yogis to gain insight and you can consider for yourself how many of these things are possessed by you first of all sadha faith and confidence if you have faith and confidence in the dharma especially the practice of sati patana the quality of sati patana then this enough this is enough for your faith such faith is enough for you and uh, if you have faith in this practice faith in the teacher and faith in yourself also will be already included in this so if you have such a faith then you have made a good beginning for the practice a second limb of striving is health enough health to undertake the practice now as has already been said that if one is able to take food normally sleep normally and move about normally then one can be said to be healthy to possess enough health to undertake the practice of course in this era there's no such thing as totally free from health not free from disease everybody has some sort of ailment some sort of sickness physical debility so of course uh, there are people who have chronic diseases and of course it is difficult to be totally free of disease at this time if one must practice only when one is totally healthy free of disease then it will not be it will never be possible to undertake the practice in one's life so as regards the second factor second limb about health one cannot be totally free of disease even for some yogis who have who are sick with some kind of disease can practice meditation if they are really uh energetic and uh, have real faith even for some people who are at the dying moment can practice and gain insight there have been cases like this so nobody can be totally free from disease from health from the uh, disability of course we can say that i by mentioning this uh, limb of striving health as one of the limbs of striving that if you are healthy so much the better so by seeing the yogis who have come here all the way they are practicing normally they are said to be healthy and they are healthy enough to undertake the practice so you can be encouraged in this aspect now a third limb of striving is honesty straightforwardness not to pretend what you don't possess not to not to pretend to possess what you don't and to be able to reveal your weaknesses and shortcomings at occasionally if necessary to your teacher and to your fellow yogis we can say that you have you possess this kind of quality now the fourth one is important that is uh, application exertion of energy now in the beginning of the practice you apply this initial initial uh, launching energy but that's uh, you don't have to be afraid of that by hearing energy uh it's not so intensive in the beginning there's only some 
a small way of the exertion of energy in the beginning. However, in the course of the practice, while you are exerting this initial launching energy, you may come to a situation where you tend to become slack, and even if you have energy in the beginning, you become exhausted and will not wish to exert more energy, become sluggish. Now we need to apply a second stage of energy in order to overcome this situation, to boost up this energy for the second stage of exhaustion. Then it will become more intensive, more severe, higher exhaustion of energy. Now when you overcome this situation that is sluggishness, slackness, pain and so on, then what is your goal in the practice. So, if you are able, if you have enough faith in the practice, then your goal should be at least to realize the first path. Then your existence will be assured. So, for that purpose, you have to apply this third stage of energy, that is progressive energy, progressive application of energy to realize the goal. For that, nobody else can help you. You yourself has to exert. Neither the Buddha, nor the Ahans, nor Siyaro can help you. You have to do it by yourself. It is up to you to apply these three stages of energy. Initial energy, boost up energy, stepped up energy and the progressive energy. This is the responsibility of the meditators. Well, you can say that uh, you are fulfilled with these five limbs of striving. As for the out of these five limbs, you are, you totally possess, you can, we can say that you are in possession of the three, the first three limbs of striving. And as for the fourth one, all you have to do is apply the energy. It's up to you to do it. Depending on your goal that you wish to realize. And as for the last one, namely seeing the first arising and passing away, Udiyabhyanyana, the momentary nature of experience, the first uh, fleeting momentary nature of experience, the knowledge of the fleeting momentary nature of experience. This is the last limb of striving, to see the first arising and passing away of objects noted. So if you are able to apply this energy, you are bound to sustain your mindfulness, and so long as you sustain your mindfulness, you are bound to deepen your concentration and thus cultivate insight knowledge, advancing through the levels of insight knowledge progressively, and as you see the arising and passing away of mind-body, the old giving place to the new, seeing the fleeting momentary nature of experience. When one once you come to this stage, you can be assured that if you continue with the practice, you are bound to realize the Dharma in this very life. So we can say that uh, you are in possession or if you are fulfilled with all these five limbs of striving in your own right. So you should be encouraged and inspired about this. So if you think about it, and uh, consider yourself, you should be very much encouraged. Once you are fulfilled with these five limbs of striving, then you can be set to be able to undertake this bhavana, mind development practice. Now, my bhavana is not, none other than 
the mindfulness of every arising in your body and mind, beginning with the main object of rising and falling as your primary object, sustaining your mindfulness with the application of energy and proper focusing, deepening your concentration, cultivating your mind and knowledge. As knowledge progresses, it becomes continuous one by one. It multiplies, the knowledge multiplies, hence this is bhavana. You are said to be practicing or developing bhavana. You can practice bhavana. Then uh, you are bound to realize insight, gain insight, even within the time that you are here. Out of these uh, five, for some people, they already possess the first three limbs of striving. And as for some, they, all, they have very strong sada with the deepening of the concentration and cultivation of knowledge. And then, in the course of the practice, they become more and more straightforward and more intensive in their practice. This uh, faith depends on yogis' energy, exertion of energy. As much as they can exert their energy and realize that quality, there will be more and more sadha, faith and confidence. And uh, this can arise uh, continuously. If so, as has been said yesterday, it is possible to gain this Udhyabhya Jnana, the fleeting momentary nature of experience, or seeing the arising and passing away of objects in a very fast manner within four, five, six, or one week. And in, in which situation you may be able to see illuminations in an unusual way, things you have not experienced before, and other encouraging and attractive Dhamma qualities. Furthermore, there will be this delight, PT, and as a result of PT, the materialities, that means the parts of the body, will become excellent, known as PT Jarupa. Materiality as a result of delight, PT, or joy. So, so much so that uh, you feel very comfortable to practice, to sit. And while you are sitting, you may think that uh, you are not touching the floor. And uh, at times, uh, it really lift, is lifted up. You, feel, you might feel that you are being lifted up, levitated. And actually you are levitated sometimes, at times. At times uh, there are cases of people pumping against the mosquito net while they are sitting at the mosquito net. And you know, when you are walking also, you will feel as though you are not touching the floor or ground where you are walking. And you will you have uh, physical and mental happiness, physically healthy, physically good, mentally good. And your sati mindfulness will become very sharp. It is known as Subhatita Sati in Pali. Subhatita comes from Upatita. Upatita means uh, uh, the sati Mind, the mind is very close to the object. It is stuck to the object like a super glue. And uh, it is very close to the object so that uh, you are able to see things in the clear, and very clearly. And at that time, the super tita sati, the uh, closely knitted or closely, clo- very close mindfulness becomes very good. So that at that time sati becomes extraordinarily good. And whenever you think about something, for instance a distant thing about something, an incident which happened in the distant past or even in the immediate past, uh, these things will come into your vision, come into your mind very clearly, like you are attaining the supernormal power, a banyan, 
because of your excellent quality of mindfulness. So as much as this mindfulness is uh, sharp and uh, effective, your insight knowledge also will be very sharp and effective. You will see the rising and passing way of objects, all giving place to the new, like when a uh, very sharp when you are cutting something in your kitchen with a very sharp knife, it will cut very clearly, clear cut manner, so so that you will see the arising and passing away in a very fast manner. You will see the fleeting momentary nature of experience. And then your mindfulness is very good and your knowledge is very good. And then 